Bruins Diehards presents Clawing Through History. On January 2nd, 1929, Boston Bruins defenseman Eddie Shore missed the team train at North Station underneath the city's brand new arena, Boston Garden. Eddie Shore can probably be considered the first in a long line of legendary defensemen that have played for the Bruins franchise. Hockey in the 1920s was obviously much different from today, but by all accounts, Shore was considered one of the best skaters to ever play the game. He also seemed like a total lunatic, and this story is evidence of that. On January 3rd, 1929, the Boston Bruins were set to play the Montreal Maroons in the famous Montreal Forum. And if you're not familiar with the Maroons, it's because they haven't existed in 82 years. Apparently, the Maroons were created to appeal to the English-speaking citizens of Montreal. They only lasted from 1924 to 1938 after having the worst attendance in the league, albeit a small league, and Montreal would go on to have one team represent the city. If you're a Bruins fan, you may have heard of them. So on January 2nd, the train left North Station missing their best player. Shore's taxi had been tied up in traffic coming from his Brookline apartment. So I guess some things never change in Boston. Shore later said that when the Bruins coach Art Ross was counting players and found him missing, he was actually running down the train platform after the train. After reading about Shore, I have no doubt he would have actually jumped on the train as it was moving. There was a fine of $500 for missing the team train. Shore didn't want the fine, and he knew the Bruins needed the win. His next option was to try and catch a plane. Unfortunately, an incoming blizzard had grounded all flights out of Boston. But the Bruins needed this win, and Shore wasn't just about to let the team play without him. He decided he would drive. And luckily, a rather well-off fan offered Shore his car and even his driver to make the 300-plus mile trek to Montreal. Just imagine for a second if someone told you that you had to drive over 300 miles from Boston Garden to the Montreal Forum during a blizzard. Now just imagine doing that in a time before the modern highway system, four-wheel drive, and proper plowing and salting. Plus, it sounds like Shore drove through New Hampshire's White Mountains in the middle of the night. And the mountains in northern New England are no joke, especially in the winter. According to Stan Fischler, who wrote an article about this story, the limo driver was driving at three miles per hour when Shore expressed that he wasn't pleased at their rate of travel. The driver pleaded with Shore to let them turn around and head back to Boston, but Eddie wanted to push on. The car ended up skidding off into a ditch shortly thereafter. Now, you might think that this would convince Shore to turn back, but like I said earlier, he was kind of a lunatic. He took the wheel and drove the car to an all-night service station to get chains put on the tires. I don't know much about cars from the late 1920s, but I imagine their defrost feature was virtually non-existent. So at this point, ice and snow began to freeze on the windshield, causing them to have to drive blind. Shore was determined though, and decided to remove part of the windshield, exposing his face to ice, snow, and wind. Whatever he was paying that limo driver, there's no way it could be enough. Eventually, the chains on the wheels wore out. Shore and the terrified chauffeur pushed on until they came across another gas station, where they woke up the gas station attendant and got him to install a new set of chains. According to Fischler's article, the car, with Shore driving, skidded off the road a few more times, but each time, he was able to get them out. The next afternoon, when yet another pair of chains broke off, Eddie thought it would maybe be a good time for him to finally get some sleep. So he had the chauffeur take over as he jumped in the back, and he told the poor guy to never go under 12 miles per hour, and with that, Eddie Shore dozed off. But that didn't really last long. He woke to the car crashing into another ditch, and this time, they couldn't get the car out. It wasn't damaged, and neither of the men were hurt, but it was just impossible to move. He hiked a mile in the snow to a local farm and paid $8 to have a team of horses pull his car out of the snow. And at that point, they were actually pretty close to Montreal. They had been driving for nearly 16 hours by the time they pulled up to the Bruins Hotel. Shore was in rough shape. He was frostbitten, and according to his coach, Art Ross, he was in no condition for hockey, says Ross. His eyes were bloodshot, his face frostbitten and windburned, his fingers were bent and set like claws after gripping the steering wheel so long, and he couldn't walk straight. With that, Shore passed out in his hotel room. 
After several attempts to shake him awake by his teammates Clapper and Wayland, they decided to take a glass of water and dump it on his face. And with that, he finally regained consciousness. Art Ross and his teammates weren't exactly optimistic of him being able to play at a high level that night. But he played. In fact, he played the entirety of the game, save for two penalties that he received. The game itself remained scoreless until just over midway through the second period. And finally, the Bruins managed to break the tie. The one goal would end up being enough to secure the win in the end. And if this story doesn't seem crazy enough, it was Eddie Shore who scored the game-winning goal.